Hi everyone, my name's Chris and today's video is going to be a gear review on this thing here. This is the Light Lock Lightweight Assault Pack from Grey Ghost Gear. Now this is a fairly new item out on the market. Uh, it's quite, it's quite uh, different. It's sort of following the trends that a lot of the gear companies are going with right now that's all about stripping down the weight of the equipment that you're carrying on you. Not necessarily the actual items, but all your nylon gear, all your pouches, all that sort of stuff. You've got Tactical Taylor there doing their Fight Light series. You've got Helium Whisper stuff coming out for Blue Force gear. You've got Tear Attack, they're making their sort of strange nylon Kevlar mix that's going to be lighter and stronger. And it's, it's all about cutting down the weight, every ounce counts, all that sort of thing. With that in mind, Grey Ghost, they've started um, producing their own gear. They, originally they were just sort of an outlet, just getting rid of overruns of stock from other companies. But this is one of the first items that they've started producing for themselves. It's quite an interesting piece of equipment. Like I say, it's fairly new out. And the material that it's mostly produced from is what makes this quite unique. The fabric, as I say in the title, is called Light Lock. Uh, it's meant to be, according to the, uh, the manufacturers of the stuff, uh, they made it in conjunction with Cry Precision and... Uh, if you want the exact details and all the sort of characteristics about it, etc., you can uh, just uh, click the link I'm going to put down there in the description. On a basic level, the whole idea behind this stuff is that it's supposed to be lighter than 500 denier Cordura, according to the manufacturer, by 30%, which is quite a weight saving already on 500 denier, which is already obviously a 50% weight saving on a 1000 denier Cordura. However, of course, when you make materials lighter and thinner, you compromise integrity, robustness, and general longevity of the product that you produce out of the material. However, the, uh, the claim by the manufacturer is that this stuff does maintain extremely high abrasion resistance and general resistance to wear and tear. Yeah. The abrasion, the friction, getting uh, scuffed against walls and on floors and you know, all the stuff that a, a pack like this is meant to designed to endure the sort of things it's going to encounter in the environments where someone's going to use this sort of pack with molly webbing and made out of multicam. Multicam pattern itself is pretty nice. The, the material it is a little bit more shiny than Cordura. It does have a very slight sheen to it. It's quite minor though. Um, it's not, I don't see it as a particularly big deal. It, it's not hard to, it's not easy to spot. I don't think you guys watching the video right now will probably pick it up a massive amount. But uh, yeah, that's that's the basic idea behind it. It is very lightweight. It's empty right now, and you know, it, you, you hold it in your hands, and there is barely anything to it. I'm not sure the exact weight. Great Ghost don't list it, and I don't have any sort of uh, scales to hand, unfortunately, that I can weigh something of this nature accurately. But it is extremely light and it's got a good amount of space inside. But let's get a bit closer in and have a look at some of the features in it. So we've had a look at the actual material that the Grey Ghost Pack is produced from. What it's made of. Let's have a bit of a closer in look at the actual features you're going to get with this pack. And to start off, you've got two main pockets. You've got the large central one here. And you've got a side opening front part pouch. Both are pretty good sizes. This isn't a three day pack, as is the uh, typical design of a lot of them out there. It's probably more of a sort of one and a half, two days, if you really wanted to classify it. On the inside here, you've got a, a sort of tan colored lining. I think this is the same material as the multicam on the outside. Just that little extra bit of protection. Right down there on the inside, you can see you've got two elasticated restraining pockets, one on each side. They will just uh, secure in water bottles, magazines maybe, torches, whatever, whatever you're going to use. Fortunately, I would have perhaps liked to see some similar sort of features on the, on the front pouch there, but they haven't just included anything, but it's not too big of a deal. The zips themselves, really good chunky zips. The, the main zip part itself is metal. One problem, as you'll see right there, this always happens with it. When you're zipping it and unzipping it, 
it, they always tend to bite over onto the material that overlaps the zip teeth themselves. Now it's not, it's not a problem, it doesn't stick in, it's you know, easy as that, it can be removed, but almost every time you undo and redo these zips that will happen. That said however, that's almost a good thing in a way because you can see that they've, uh, they've gone to the effort of just overlapping that material and bringing it round so the zip is covered up and it just continues the camouflage pattern a lot better really. Looking at the top here, you've got your main carry handle, they put a lot of stitching onto that. Now a lot of companies they would have just put this uh, sort of strip of fabric, just done it flat, but in order to make it contour for your hand a bit better, they've folded those edges in just around here, stitched it on, just makes it a bit more comfortable to carry. And of course, if you look close up, as with any quality bit of gear, there's lots of uh, double, triple stitching going on there. It's, you know, it's good and secure. The actual webbing itself, it's, you know, it's all mil-spec materials. It's not, it's not gonna fall apart on you anytime soon. These plastic buckles here probably look a bit out of place, but I'll explain what's going on with those in just a moment. There's Grey Ghosts, uh, there's their own label there. This piece itself, actually opens up, you've got a good amount of Velcro on there. And then, as you can see, it's access to, say you've got a hydro uh, carrier on the inside of your main pouch there, or some sort of comms equipment. It just gives you an opening to feed those wires or tubes through. It's a good feature to see. However, the main, I, I would say, the main hydro carrier compartment is actually in there. Again, you've got a big patch of Velcro. That, that closes that up. Padding on the back, you can see there. Good thickness of padding, not too much that it's going to get ridiculously thick and make the thing sort of uh, not sit flush with your back. But it, it's enough. It's also going to help insulate the hydration carrier, the bladder that you've got inside of that pouch if you are choosing to run one. On the inside of it, there is a uh, there is a divider section. You probably struggle to see that, but there is a divider right down in there, just to keep things all separate and in their place. Again, looking at the zips, the uh, the actual pulls on them, they've just got paracord, just code you paracord. It's a bit long, and I think one of the main detractors with this pack is how much extra material there is loose and flapping around. It's, it's great for when it's cold and when you've got gloves on. It's nice and easy to, to use and to get access to these things because of these extra long zip pulls and that sort of stuff. But it does leave a lot of that material, like I say, flapping in the breeze. And that is a slight problem. On the front of the front pocket here, got a nice little square of uh, pile Velcro. Just this kind of, it's, it's an interesting colour they've gone for. It's pretty much the same sort of colour as the webbing when you see it in the right in in person in the normal light. It's a kind of it looks green in certain lights and brown in others, it which is good for the camouflage effect. Again, if you want to have a look at the close in on the, the stitching on the molly webbing itself, it's pretty solid. Now the keen eyed amongst you will probably be thinking, hold up a second, those webbing loops there are not to spec and you'd be right that dimension there they are short however I've tested I've just fitted a couple of the uh, cheap pouches just on the sides there to test it because if you look on the sides where there's a bit more webbing you see that one is the right size and these two are narrower my guess is they've done that to save on the weight because this pack is all about being lightweight and uh, because you can see it's still attached the pouches on perfectly fine they're, they're not going anywhere so, I'd, I'd, again, I don't have a problem with this. It, it, it's stitched on perfectly well, so I don't think this is a particularly weak point of the structure or anything like that. Even if it does look a little bit odd on first inspection. What else have we got to look at? So I've worked a while down the, down the front there, with all the molly webbing, nothing much particular to look at on the bottom there. There's no drainage grommets or anything, but then I wouldn't think that would be normal on a pack. So let's flip it around to this side and onto the actual shoulder straps themselves. You've got good thickness of webbing there, attaching it at the top. And obviously 
on the comfort front, the main thing you're going to be concerned about is these straps. Now, you can see already they've done a good job with the contouring of it. That's going to fit around your shoulders, fit you know, follow the contours of your body well. You've got straps of webbing going across there for securing wires and tubes, all that sort of thing. Nice uh, plastic loop there for more of that sort of stuff. You've got your sternum strap going across. It's adjustable. Fastex buckle for donning and doffing. Can be adjusted for the height. Nice, well, I say easily. There you go. Yeah, just slides up and down there. So you can set that up exactly how you like. Also, nice big buckle there. You can take them off. You could stow the straps away if you wanted to. Undo them like that, and then you could tuck them inside your hydro pouch there if you so desired. As I mentioned earlier, a problem area with this pack, and pretty much the only problem I find with it, is the amount of loose straps. Already here on the sternum strap, you can see when that's tightened up, you've got a lot of loose webbing, and there is no... You generally find on, these, on a high-end piece of kit, you would expect a little bungee loop, a little piece of Velcro loop round, something like that, to secure that strap in place, but there isn't anything, and that's a bit of a letdown. It's not a massive deal. I think anyone who knows what they're doing with the gear, they'll be able to sort that out. It is a slight problem. Also the adjustment on the main straps themselves. Now I've actually done a mod to this already. Normally there is nothing to secure all of this webbing strap. All of that would just be flapping around like that. And there is nothing supplied with the pack to sort that out. It's a bit of a problem. What I've done, I've cut around four inches off the end of this strap. There's normally a loop of the webbing on the deer, I've cut that off. I've taken some Velcro, just a tan bit of Velcro, off of a British issue desert camelback, thermoback bladder carrier. Uh, the Velcro itself was on the, the main, well, it's on a pretty similar position, exactly the same position on the straps on the thermoback. I've removed that. Obviously, make sure you uh, get a match or a lighter on the end of any straps you cut there just to secure it because nylon like this it will fray and it'll just fray and fray and fray if you don't melt it in but yeah got this little loop of velcro here sewn that on end result you wind those straps up you secure that velcro and there you go you've gone from that just flopping around all of that to a very nice neat secure system. Very good. Attachment points on the base of the main shoulder straps. You've got a nice square of the light lock material. Or triangle should I say. Plenty of stitching going on there, keeping it all secure. Happy with that. So that's the straps. Now I mentioned earlier before these plastic buckles and actually one another one of the problems I had in terms of the loose stuff flapping around. One of the features of this pack is it's designed to be attached to the back of a molly rig plate carrier, a, a larger backpack with molly webbing, whatever. And to that vein, on each side, you've got these straps. And yet again, if you're not using it in that molly capacity, if you're just using the shoulder straps, there is nothing you can do about these. They, there is no little retention device to keep them secure. You could tuck them into the molly webbing on the side, but that's why I've put these pouches on there just so I can tuck these things away. Just a temporary measure, I'm hoping I can come up with something better, but this does the job for now. Just a pistol pouch and a rifle mag pouch on either side, tuck those in. But like I mentioned, this, this pack is designed that you can use it on the back of your molly plate carrier, whatever you're gonna use. And to that end, you have, you have these pieces and that's what these clips up the top are for. When you buy the pack, it is supplied with some of these. What this is, you've got a tactical tail and malice clip, as you can see, coyote colour match to the pack. You've got strip on uh, cordura, some molly webbing there. You've got a fast X buckle, sort of split in it for attaching. You get a few of these. Everything you'll need, basically. With these clips up the top, what you do, put that on there, and then as you can see, you've got a malice clip, and that's going to go onto 
sort of your shoulder in that sort of a region on your molly vest. One on each side. And down the bottom with these, just take that piece there, clip that on, and then thread using that split in the clip there. You can thread that on to your plate carrier or your chest rig or whatever. And then you've got it all got packed fully secured onto your back without having to use the shoulder straps. You can tuck them shoulder straps away. So that's all the basic features of it. Gone through the materials, all the straps, all that sort of things, the problems with it. Now they do claim this material is water resistant. I'm not sure. It is extremely thin. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've got, a, uh, got a couple of pieces of just plain paper. I'm going to put them inside, put the hose on this thing, and let's see what happens. Right then, got the Grego's pack hanging up here, ready for a bit of a soaking. Got a few bits of paper, just nice plain white paper. It's going to do a good job of showing when the water gets through. So let's have one sheet. Put in the front pouch there. Make sure that's all tucked in. Get the zip fully up to the top. Make sure it's a fair test of the material. Two more sheets of paper. Put them into the main pouch just to represent whatever gear you might have maps in that pack. Okay. Let's turn the water on. Got my gun hose. Let's uh, set that to a spray, I think. That sort of a thing. And uh, let's see, see what happens when we uh, spray this down for a few seconds. to represent the rain coming down. It's going a bit horizontal, it will be at normal soon. I think that's a, that's a fairly good soaking. It's certainly beading up more than I expected. I was thinking it would literally just soak right through that stuff. Let's open it up inside and uh, see how the paper's fared. Yep, nice bone. That really surprised me. I was thinking that water would go straight through that because it is really thin material, this stuff. It is wafer thin. I am, I am really quite surprised in a very good way. I'm guessing they put some sort of treatment onto that stuff, a bit of Teflon maybe, to, as you can see, it's, it's almost like Gore-Tex, the water's just beading up on it and just rolling straight off, so that's really good to see. Let's try inside the main pocket. Again, that's dry as a bone. You can hear that's not got soggy. Um, pretty impressive. Let's give it one more quick soak in just to make sure. Let's try a bit more water pressure this time.
then I think you guys will agree that was a lot of a lot of water I've put down on there. And unfortunately I can see already I don't think I've closed up that the sides it just here. So I think the water might have gotten inside a bit because of that. But rain actual you know rainfall is nothing like the way I just spread that. It's far it's far more dissipated, far more spread out. You know, unless someone actually sprays you with a hose, there's no way this pack's going to suffer that much sort of saturation of water. But let's have a look inside, see how the paper's done. Uh, most of it's coming off my gloves, to be honest. There's a little bit of a spray on there, but I didn't close the zip up, so I think that's my fault. Go inside the main pouch, I think I've closed the zip up properly on this one. Yeah, it's managed to get inside a bit. It's a bit of water on the paper there. But we're only talking, yeah, there's a little bit of a spray. But it's, you know, that, that was a ridiculously unrealistic water spray I've put on it. And I can see a few droplets on the inside. There's a little bit of moisture. But, you know, I, I just poured litres and litres right onto really specific points. So it does manage to get through if you literally, you know, hose it down like that. But as you saw in the previous test, which was a lot more like actual rain, absolutely nothing got in. So I think, unless you're in the most ridiculous hurricane, monsoon, bloody tsunami, whatever, I think that's going to be fine. Because even in that totally unrealistic second test, it still stayed 70-80% dry on the piece of paper here. So yeah, overall, I'm impressed by that. I think that would be perfectly suitable for use, even on a rainy day. Good stuff. So yeah, that's the Grey Ghost Lightweight Assault Pack. Super lightweight, good value for money. Very innovative, impressive product, good water resistance. Strong, robust, very impressed. Nine out of 10, I'm gonna say. Hope you find the video enjoyable, guys. I'll see you next time.